You get to join us in Sylvan Park today so that you can decide if it is the right Nashville community for you. I have a wonderful guest. My beautiful bride, Megan, is with me today. We invite you to join us to see if it's an area that you might want to call home. And we are starting off at Barista Parlor. We're going to grab some caffeine and jump right in. Okay, so we're going to show you around the neighborhood a little bit. And if you said, hey, Alex, I really want to be in Sylvan Park, but I'm curious, what is the least amount of money I can spend and still be in that neighborhood? This is it. Right now, it's the least expensive home. It's listed just under $400,000. It's a small home. It's a two bed, one bath, 744 square feet home, and it does need some work. However, it has an incredible view. It sits on Lookout Drive. Most of Sylvan Park is essentially flat. There's one big hill and this house sits on top of it. So could be a really cool house with an amazing view if you wanted to put in some elbow grease. For one bathroom, I'm gonna pay 50 bucks for that house. $50. $50. Okay. Just because of the location. How much do you think somebody else would pay for it? Um, Two bed, one bath. $400,000. Did I win? You were off by $50. If you like this content at all, be sure to hit the like button. It helps us get in front of others so that they can also discover new Nashville communities. Here's a home that's closer to the average price in Sylvan Park of a million dollars. This one's listed at just under 1.3 million. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,800 square feet, built in 2014. And this is one of Sylvan Park's most expensive homes on the market right now listed at 2.2 million dollars with four beds four and a half baths over 3700 square feet of living space it is brand new and has some beautiful finishes inside and out if you're looking for a delicious bagel pastry coffee that kind of thing star bagel is going to be your spot it is in the heart of sylvan park so we're going to go in there grab a bite to eat head across the street have a little snack and enjoy the views at mccabe golf course wow that's really good. No, leave it. The banana bread is also very good. How long do you think this could stay on just as far as like, you know, cement factor? Mm, a couple days. What if I did a lot of head shaking? Mm -mm. It's not going anywhere. But like, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Do you think one of the kids would lick it off for a dollar? That was so gentle and romantic. Do you want to try my banana bread? No, I'm stuck on this. I'm going into sugar shop right now. Look at that. But this is part of this is part of the Greenway, though. This is part of the Richland Street Greenway. I don't understand why everybody's not at work. What would you be doing right now? Washing my socks. So we're here at McCabe. They have three nine-hole courses. It's a municipal course. This is not a club. Although I do think they have some kind of like annual pack where you can pay a fee and go on as many times as you want. My understanding is this is the busiest municipal course in all of Davidson County. This is a public course. Okay, government. The government. Richland Creek Greenway is a, essentially a three mile loop that goes all the way around the course. And then if you live in this area, if you live in Sylvan Park and you want to go to Trader Joe's and get your exercise at the same time, you can go to the other side of the greenway, cross over the creek, they have a little bridge, and grab some groceries. Grab some groceries and then be efficient about it because you're walking back. Exactly. Like a New Yorker. They walk around with their groceries. You could walk there, grab lunch, and eat the lunch on the way back. Are these guys like better golfers than country club golfers? Um, Are the walkers better walkers than country club walkers? So you get a mixed you get a mixed bag. To see a scratch golfer here, it's probably occasionally. Hmm. A few times that I've played here, um, it's usually recreational golfers that aren't into getting lessons. Don't want to get better, but they really have fun playing golf. Ah. One of the reasons this may be so popular is because it's it's wide open. It's actually hard to lose a ball. Like you can just shank it or slice it or whatever, and there's not a lot of thick grass or bushes to hit into. Do you think those guys from the McKay Pub that wear tweed come over here and golf in like those knickers? I don't think so. Do you see any knickers on the uh, drop range? No, but he probably looked good in some knickers. Like that guy on um, Happy Gilmore? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the guy with the fake hand? Yeah, he looked good in some knickers. So you could park here for free, go get some barbecue at Edley's, or mm -hmm. are we not around Edley's? Very near Edley's. 
I have a friend that lives in Oklahoma that craves Edley's and makes it a point to come to Edley's every oh, time really? she comes into town. From All the way from Oklahoma. It's southern like, barbecue. They don't do meat over in Oklahoma? Not like that. Apparently. Evidently not. Apparently. We're in this heart of Sylvan Park. You have the roundabout. I'd say the roundabout is probably like the heart of Sylvan Park. That's as central as you can get. That's where several restaurants are. You have Edley's Barbecue. You have a taco place. You have several restaurants there, most of which are pretty highly rated and popular. So you want to live there? You're paying like $4 million for like a one bath? No, I don't know that it's much more expensive. But if you're living anywhere, like Brad and Brooke are, they're not right next door to Edley's, but they could easily walk to dinner. Wow. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They when moved last, from our area of town in the woods with a funky house. Yeah. To come here to not live in the woods mm -hmm. and live next to a barbecue joint. And they feel safe here. This is good, but I'm in sugar shock. My rat's getting thirsty. Kind of wondering what everybody does for a living since everybody's out and about, like not at the office. Don't see a lot of giant expensive SUVs with seaside stickers on it. Also like that. Everybody's kind of down to earth. Everything seems pretty functional around here. If a guy from Denver wants to move here, it means it's cool. If I was moving a business here from California and I had a healthcare company, I would not put it in Silver Park. Why not? I would just put it closer to where other healthcare companies might be, like in Metro Center or Maryland Farms. Or, like, if that's the business you're in, you probably want to be around other businesses that are doing, that are in the same industry. If I had a tech company and I wanted to attract talented, younger folks who want a certain kind of work environment, then I might be looking for a warehouse that's been renovated, that is really vibey, cool place near foodie-ish restaurants. So if I have like a tech company, I might look in this area for sure. Like techno music? Mm-hmm, techno music. And the DJ's wearing a peacoat with a hoodie underneath? Yep. It's weird. What do we do with this? I'm gonna take it back to the Denver guy and be like, dude. Too much. Too much. Was it good though? I'm sure the bagel would have been good if it not. One of the gems of the Sylvan Park area is the l l Market. It's been here nearly a hundred years. It's been a hosiery and a mill. The current owner several years ago had multiple offers from people wanting to buy the property, tear it down, and build something else. He did not want to see that. He wanted to maintain the history, so he renovated about seven years ago to what it is today. The l l Market is such a fun place to come and visit, especially if you're looking for upscale shopping and gourmet eating. It is one of the coolest places in Nashville, especially if you're looking for something in the Sylvan area. They have everything from handmade jewelry at Judith Bright to handmade furniture at Masaya. You have Made in Tennessee, which now has several locations. We got to speak to the owner. And like many owners at l l Market, they are so friendly and supportive of other local businesses, which is awesome to see. There's the milkshake bar that you can enjoy with some of the most indulgent desserts that you can find. You have Panay Paza, where they have some of my favorite pizza in town. If you're into pizza, you definitely want to check it out because they also have really great service and I appreciate that about them. And I think you will too. You have Baseline Brewing Company and if hot yoga is your thing, there is Ben and Zen Hot Yoga. So whether you're in this area or not, l, &L Market is worth checking out. That's a good question. I don't know where they got it from. Should I go back up and ask him? No. Are you happy to be here? Do you like it here? So he decided to open up a restaurant in Sylvan Park all the way from Australia. I don't know how long he's been here, but if we didn't eat Australian fish at Red Perch, which of these restaurants would you have chosen? You have Radish, you have Punk Walk, you have another Broken Egg, which is one of my favorites. It does really good. Punk walk. You have uh, otaku ramen. Ooh. Would you go punk walk or otaku? You have sushi here. You have ramen there. I would go to otaku ramen where the bowls are so big that you regret it but you can't stop going back. This is serious fish. That's like, yeah. That's like steak fish. Well they have to like be able to run away from those great whites and so they have to be big and fast. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Whoa. You went a little overboard there. No. If you work here, you have a lot of lunch options. And if you live in Sylvan Park, you're a very short drive to all these restaurants. Right. Well. And you can hop on the interstate. You basically have everything you need except 
I bet you have to think about all the traffic to go to Target. You're still within 10 to 15 minutes, even with heavy traffic. And it is a lot. You have Charlotte Park and then White Bridge if you want to go to grocery stores down there. Is this called the suburbs? I would not call this suburbs. Because you don't see a lot of minivans and homes that look like cookie cutter. Right. Suburbs would be Mount Juliet, Hendersonville, Franklin, Brentwood, Bellevue. I wonder what the stress level is of people who live in a busy area that has a bunch of cool shops and restaurants versus people that live in the quiet suburbs with bigger yards and no walkable restaurants. I don't know if you can go from rural country straight into living in Sylvan Park and be able to adapt very yeah. quickly. Yeah. But I've already assimilated. Have you? Yeah, I mean, it's been like four hours. Could you see yourself living here? You know, I'm not very good at parallel parking. I don't know. Street parking? Mm-hmm. I'm a little paranoid that somebody's gonna drive by and clip my car. Mm-hmm. And then I do a lot of outdoor screaming. I don't think that goes well in Sylvan Park. What if you got a house with a garage? I mean, you could just pull in through the back. I just don't know. Sure are a lot of neighbors around, but I can see other people living in Sylvan, Sylvan Park and loving it. Mm -hmm. Especially our friends that moved out to the rural area and then came back to Sylvan Park because they loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And boy, I mean, you could basically just jog to the emergency room. So if you want an acre, like you might find in Brentwood, you don't want to move to Sylvan Park. Um, if you have had issues with your with neighbors in close proximity in the past, you probably don't want to be in Sylvan Park because the neighbors are... Right there. They're right there. People coming from New York would probably love this. They'd be like, a yard? I love it. They're not... Oh. Did you get that? Nice. But people that come from Texas, that have like longhorns in their back 90, mm -hmm. I don't think they would do well here. Median price in Davidson County is about 450 right now, late 2023. The average price in Sylvan Park is probably slightly north of a million. Well, the, the two bed, one bath that we looked at was 400,000. The attached newer construction, 2,600 square foot home was one one. And there are a handful of homes that are, you know, north of two million. If you want to buy the dirt and tear down what's there, are you going to get a whole bunch of Sylvan Park people like picketing in the front? Probably. And like hating on you? So it depends. I appreciate the builders that build something that is consistent with what's around. So, for example, you might build a craftsman home. And even if it's big, you might make it. You might design it in such a way that the space sort of, uh, you know, maybe you have two stories in the back where it's one so that it looks like a, from the from the road, it looks like a house that fits in, but you might even have 4,000 square feet. Whereas some of the houses are, you know, three stories next to a one story and it just sticks out like a sore thumb. I would hate to like tick off the neighbors first thing. Of course, if I were an investor, I wouldn't care because I'm not going to be living there. Yeah. And that's part of it. You have developers that try to take into consideration what the neighborhood is like and others that don't. I were like some kind of artist. Anything related to art. So you mentioned earlier, man, there's so, like all these cool people around here and it kind of makes you feel cool. That's why I would go to East Nashville if I was a kind of artist versus Sylvan Park, even though there's a lot of similarities with the restaurants and sort of the vibe of it all. The other thing is schools. If you're looking for a strong K through 12 public school system, a highly rated for niche.com, you're not going to want to be in Sylvan Park. Look for other areas that have highly rated K through 12 public school system. But if you don't have kids and you love to go to bar class and then meet up with your friends, but live in a neighborhood that has a yard, mm -hmm. cool. Yep. Or you have a baby and it doesn't matter. Yep. Because you have five years to decide. Yeah. It's a great area, especially for people that maybe they've been living on the west side, but further out from town. Maybe their kids are out of the house now and they want to get closer to town, enjoy it, but they want to be in a neighborhood and they want a nice home. 
It's a great place to be. Yeah, I saw a lot of people that age. Yeah. That have their like dogs to replace their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Empty nesters. Oh yeah. But like fresh empty nesters. Right. That can still parallel park. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And know how to use a phone. Mm-hmm. I get it. This is the site of one of the area's most exciting upcoming projects, and that is Sky Nashville. If you're looking for a luxury townhome in this area, this is going to be the place to get it. It's built by one of the best builders in Nashville, and they're going to have gorgeous views overlooking the rolling hills of West Nashville. Hopefully, now you know if the Sylvan Park area is the right Nashville community for you, and whether you're thinking of a move to Sylvan Park area or anywhere in Metro Nashville, my team and I would love to help. We will treat you like family and make sure you have a five-star experience. And if you'd like to connect with us, you can call, text, email us. Our information is in the description below. And you can also check out our 300 plus five-star Google reviews online. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next video.